Hello, welcome. This is Dr. Ruben Rafaelov, Doctor of Pharmacy, Certified NET Practitioner, and I'm joined by my Associate NET Practitioner, Jennifer Handy, Registered Nurse. And today we're going to be speaking about steam inhalation, a time-tested household remedy to help clear uh, viruses and bacteria from the upper respiratory tract. Yeah, this is great because if you're not feeling well, if you have some shortness of breath, um, congestion, this is a super easy technique that does not require much from your home. Similar to how our own immune system creates a high temperature when we're sick, the steam and the heat from it actually helps to kill the viruses and bacteria in a very similar fashion locally as it's contained in the respiratory tract. So the virus, virus is in general actually very fragile and cannot live for long when it during, on a hot surface and dies very quickly. So we're trying to simulate what would be like a fever to basically um, kill any type of virus and clean the whole nasal passageway. In addition, the steam itself, the humidity, actually clears mucus, which is very beneficial and is great symptom soother. Um, in addition to that, the hot steam, you can add to it therapeutic herbs and, and essences to help give you added therapeutic benefit. So we will definitely talk um, in this video, one aspect will be the technique and also the different things you could add to the water. You could just use water, but you could also add um, some different uh, herbs to, that have their own um, health benefits. The, the technique itself, uh, we're going to be talking about two uh, variations, one for children mm -hmm. and adults over 10 years old, another one for infants and for small children. Because we all can, we all have suffered from respiratory uh, infections, and from again from infants up to uh, up to adulthood. So this is applicable for literally anyone and everyone at all ages. Uh, so to start this technique, you will get a large um, heat-safe bowl. You will have the hot water, which will create the steam, and any uh, herbs you would like to use. Um, people like to use seeds, bark pollen, dried or fresh leaves. Um, I'm gonna go through like cinnamon, fresh ginger. You could just take cinnamon from your medicine, from your spice cabinet. So these are really easy things you could use in the house uh, to add to this steam bath. You wanna make sure anything that you're using you're not allergic to. And you can even use tea bags. So many tea bags come with a lot of these herbal essences as well. Uh, we're gonna go through hibiscus. These are all things that um, sometimes people have lying around the house. The idea is when you add these herbs, um, you want to leave them in for at least two minutes uh, uh, covered under the hot steaming water so that way they can really infuse into the steam. Uh, and if you're using any types of essential oils or essences, you want to leave that until um, the water cools a little bit, otherwise it can evaporate very quickly. So you'll go into a closed room with closed doors and windows. You'll have your, uh, your bowl that's heat safe with the steam water. Um, and the hot water is inside it. You keep it covered, like Dr. Ruben mentioned. Let it uh, steep, whatever you've put inside it, or it's just water. Um, you're having it covered with a towel, and if it's the essences are in there. Now, once it's steeped, you're going to have a towel over your head, and you will go over the water. You want to be at least a foot or foot and a half away. Um, you don't want to get burned. you got to prevent yourself from any type of scolding. Now, make sure that your surroundings are safe. You know, they don't have unattended children in the room. Because, first of all, you're not watching them. And also because you're near hot water. And make sure your dog is not around or, or any other pet to make sure that they don't accidentally tip over the hot water bottle. This is a very beautiful opportunity, um, almost to feel like you're at a spa. Because you're going to go under the towel, you're going to close your eyes, and you're going to take deep breaths, which we all need to do in general. Uh, you're going to breathe in through your nose, breathe the steam in, breathe it in through your nasal passageways, let it permeate your face and your neck and heat your chest up just by breathing it in and breathe out through your mouth. Slow, deep breaths. Now, ideally, if someone could do this for 10 minutes, that's amazing. Um, not everyone could tolerate that. So between three to five minutes is just as beneficial. We want to make sure that this procedure is only used for children and adults over 10 years old. Yes. We're going to go through now also that what you could do if uh, you have a child that's under 10. So the idea is you want to be in an enclosed. So when we're doing the steam inhalation for small and small children and infants, you want to keep them at least a few feet away from the from the hot bowl. So you want to sit them on your lap, and you want to have an enclosed space again 
that's uh, sealed so the doors and the windows are closed so that way the steam can permeate the room and can also humidify and um, their their chest and their nasal passages sometimes you know if you just have the bowl in the room it might take a while to get the room uh, steamy so you could also turn if you're in the bathroom turn on the shower hot water uh, maybe even close the curtain so it doesn't get everywhere but that will really steam up the room quickly and still have your bowl with hot water and whatever herbs you've decided to put in there yeah this will help the room steam up a lot faster and you can stay in there for how long would you say they should stay in there for well maybe? just about five ten minutes okay that's plenty of time if the, the room is nice and steamy once you're done, whether you're doing it for yourself or with a child, you want to wrap the patient, the child, the adult in a warm uh, towel or a scarf, something to really keep the heat in your chest and your throat and sip uh, warm water during that time. The goal is to really keep that whole area, um, your nasal passageways, your throat, your chest warm for as long as you can. Now, for some of the, the, the relief that you'll be getting is if you have a runny nose, uh, common cold or flu, including the COVID-19. Um, also, this works for coughs and laryngitis. And the therapeutic herbs have their own added benefits, which we're going to discuss now. Yes. So um, first, we're going to start with lemon uh, bark, lemon uh, leaves, um, and lemon flowers. So these actually help stop coughing. If someone's coughing a lot, it will help to um, expel any um, phlegm. So th that's the first one we're gonna discuss. Also, there's fresh ginger. Uh, that's helpful with pain that someone might be having. Hibiscus helps release toxins. Now, cinnamon is an interesting thing. If let's say you have a child who's having a really difficult time getting that phlegm up and he's just so weak and exhausted, cinnamon is a good thing to put into the water because it will help give him energy. It's also good if somebody has some sort of foul-smelling um, thick mucus, yellow mucus, it will help with the scent. Um, another thing that you could do is lemon grass that helps with any type of pain that someone has on their face or in their sinuses. Um, and then menthol vix or um, mint mm -hmm. is good for, um, I think it helped, what was that one? Oh, it helps, oh, to reduce a sore throat. That's that. Okay. Um, so we did discuss what, you should, what kind of treatment you should do afterwards. Now, how many times can you do this? Um, what would you say, maybe twice a day? So now we're going to discuss the different herbs that you could add to the hot water. Uh, to get the healing benefits. So the first one we're going to discuss is lemon flowers, lemon bark, or lemon leaves. That helps with coughing. So it helps kind of suppress the cough and get out any type of phlegm that's sitting in your chest. Another thing that you could use is cinnamon, which is kind of interesting. Um, let's say you have a child who's having a hard time coughing up uh, the phlegm that's in his chest. He's just very weak. Cinnamon would help give him the strength to do the coughing. Also, it's good for a foul-smelling odor. If, let's say, sometimes that thick yellow mucus that's in the chest could kind of smell bad, so the cinnamon also helps with that. Um, the next thing would be fresh ginger. That helps with pain. Hibiscus helps eliminate toxins. And menthol and Vix helps reduce a sore throat. And the last would be lemongrass. That actually helps with any type of pain someone might have in their sinuses or their face. So ideally, this type of uh, steam inhalation should be done about twice a day for a few days until symptoms are clear. And if a person is really symptomatic, they can do this for four to six times a day as needed. It's extremely safe and you can't overdo it. They actually get more benefit as, as you do it more often. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, in, in discussing and learning about steam inhalation for your upper respiratory tract, any type of infection, whether it's bacterial or viral or just some relief from any asthmatic symptoms. This steam inhalation, the old time-tested household remedy is really useful. So please watch this video again if something wasn't clear and this is to your health. Yes. Thank you. Please let us know if you have any questions. Um, we'd be happy to answer them for you. And leave your comments below and some of your experience with this technique. We'd love to get your feedback. Yes, all right, thank you. Take care. Bye.